another one. Are you well? So, feeling like I'm a, I was a bored George Lucas on a rainy Sunday afternoon, I started looking through my old videos from when I first started. You know, the ones the, where the editing and voiceover wasn't very good because I honestly didn't know what I was doing back then. Now I realise some people would say, I still don't. And on a whole, I would tend to agree with you. But I think this video showed a point in my work where I'd started to develop my own eye for builds and I'd kind of become fearless. I was so proud of the original way back then on the day of release. It was promptly slapped with a copyright ban due to the music and died a death. So ladies and gentle germs, I've recut, rescored and revoiced my ATST. Let's get down to the gritty of it, shall we? I began the build with cardstock, as my American viewers call it. Us English would just call it cardboard from a cornflakes box. So, that's what it is. I'm just drawing out shapes that can be then used as a template for when I tackle the actual um, proper stuff of the build, which will be styrene. And I do believe it was my first time using styrene as an actual source for the build. There's the first shape. As usual, I didn't use actual measurements just because I just eyeballed the science uh, as my regular viewers will know by me by now. I'm not really into all this scaling thing. I'd like to say I don't need to because I have the eye. In reality, it's because I still don't understand all this scaling down measurements stuff. It just gets in the way of my builds. I just eyeball it all and if it's close enough, then it'll do and that is a proper Yorkshire saying so there is said styrene usually you get about two sheets for under five euros uh, you can work your own price out in whatever country you're in now I'd never used this before so my apologies if you see me applying half a ton of liquid cement onto joins I didn't know that a little goes a long way when applied the cement actually melts the styrene slightly and creates a weld like bond it's amazing really, um, and knowing this now, I still like to apply a ton of cement to styrene because I tend to build like I'm wearing boxing gloves, with Mark Tyson inside said boxing gloves. What made me second guess myself for a minute or two was that one side was shiny and one side was dull. I had no idea which side to use or if it would even make a slightest of difference in the build. Anyway, I cracked on and just started cutting shapes out and then started applying the half a ton of cement. And just over three minutes, secret code word is... Mr. Big Booty. That name is taken from one of my all-time favourite films starring Peter Weller and Jeff Goldblum. You earn an extra point if you can name the 80s film in the comments. And back to the build. I started applying the cement and it started melting the styrene. So I used anything that was close to hand as a prop to stop it from all collapsing and my world come crashing down. You know, as we're nearing the end of the year, I'm thinking about 2024. Will I still be here? Mm, probably. Will I still be scratch building? Hopefully, if my hands allow. But I want to ask you what you'd like me to build. So leave a comment with an idea and hopefully I'll get around to it next year. It's not doesn't mean that I haven't got ideas for new builds, but I'd like to sort of start to build things that you guys are thinking about or would like to see. I still have a great big list of things to build. Um, there's a new Star Wars builder that's in the works and also I'm trying to tackle Thunderbirds 2. That still uh, needs a lot of bits collecting. And I've got a Void Wars mech that I'm slowly getting bits collected for that build too. But if there's anything that you quite fancy that you think I'd be able to knock up in a week or so, then just leave a comment and um, who knows, your idea might be on a video in the coming months. Back to the ATST. 
My cabin is slowly coming together. I didn't trust my gluing capabilities, so I reinforced the sides with little tiny wedges and slowly built the cabin together. I'm all sticky granny fingers at the moment, as in my huge hands are actually sticking to the styrene since I've drenched it all in cement. Now to cut this styrene, you just need a couple of light scores and then you can just gently snap it and it will break at the cut line. It's amazing. Making me look like a professional, which I'm not ladies and gentle James. Uh, the excess then can just be um, cut away using the hobby knife or then just sanded with uh, your partner's uh, nail file. I was slightly hesitant then because I realized I had used the other half's last nail file and strangely realized my Amazon delivery to replace what I'd borrowed hadn't turned up. So it looks like I'll be in the bad books again and on the washing up duties for the next month or so. God damn it. So now my cabin was built, it was on to the fun stuff. This pink thing is one of those annoying child's toys that makes equally annoying sounds when you pull it open and close it. There was nothing annoying about it on this build though, as I was using it as a greebly for the sides of the cabin, and I just cut some down and just stuck them to the side. I'd got that excited I'd forgotten to fill in the last gap in the cabin which I used a little more styrene for and once that was done then it was on to this which is um, <laughs> believe it or not these are uh, the bits that you use for uh, doing um, icing on cakes I thought they looked kind of cool and just glued and chopped some stuff together and uh, then made another box which then that is going to sit onto there which then i'm going to glue underneath there and if you understood all that you're a better person than me now new viewers will have noticed i really don't do drawings to work out, uh, things out from because i find i would obsess over something i'd drawn and would have to look for probably an object that didn't exist for me the fun in scratch building is finding something taking it cutting it and making it look like it was supposed to be part of the build from day one it's like when i started builds and i would start uh, doing lots of different colors on the builds and then it would look like nothing that i had imagined it should look like until it got to the priming process once that first uniform color is down then suddenly the build looks like exactly the thing that you had in your mind and that's what i think is great about scratch building you can have all these different colors on a build and then suddenly once the paint is down it's there it's there in your hands and you've built that to build the ATST legs, I used spoons, plastic spoons. I uh, rustled up the legs and then added greeblies to them to make them more leg like, I suppose. I used my uh, world's worst Dremel to do some holes so I could attach the legs to the box underneath the ATST cabin. Yes, that is a cocktail stick I'm using to attach the legs to the box. For a brief moment, I did have visions of grandeur in thinking I could make the legs posable, but soon realized I'm not that good, so just super glued them to the base. Once I was certain that the legs were super glued on, it was back to the cabin to add more panels, cut from styrene, and to add more greeblies. There, look at that. Only a face Darth Vader would love. I think. Kind of. This is solder. Now, I know my American friends pronounce it differently, but we call it solder over here. Uh, and I'm using this as piping as it's very bendable or uh, bendy. 
as a, a non-technical term. So I'm just going to use that some piping. Then it's onto my little greebly box where I'm just going to find little bits and pieces just to add some more details to the ATST. Yes, you did read right. This was a uh, sweet box, which um, I sadly had to eat all the sweets before I could use it as my greebly box. You know, sometimes it's a tough job, but somebody has to do it. And there's the finished uh, ATST in all its glory. And as you notice, it's all got different colors. Kind of looks um, stupid, but once it has the primer on it, everything starts to come together and that neatly takes us to the priming stage so i'm just going to use a rattle can of uh, black spray paint just to hit it and then i'm going to hit it with gray um, i just used a normal gray on top of that the black was just to try and hide some of the um, the recesses and stuff like that just to make it a little bit more sort of darker the gray was to work obviously give it the gray color that we all know ATSTs have then it was on to the weathering powders and this was the very first time I started using weathering powders and quickly uh, looked through the destructions uh, didn't tell me a lot because uh, I couldn't read it because I didn't have my glasses on so I just weathered the entire model and it is on to the glamour shots. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, leave a like, subscribe, comment. Don't forget to uh, leave the code word at the start of the comment. And until next time, you know what I'm going to say next. Keep scratching that build everybody.